Hey, good evening, everybody. It's great to be with you here on a Thursday evening. I am just a couple minutes early, but you know, that's the way I roll. I like, uh, I like being on time and, uh, man, it's great to be with you tonight. Brother Jake is not able to, to join me tonight and uh, let's keep him in prayer and, and, uh, for what's, uh, what's going on in his life. Also, I got a couple of folks here with me. Uh, they are listening, but they're also working on, uh, the backpacks that we're giving away uh sunday here at uh, sunday saturday here at uh here at grace church uh it's open the same time the food pantry will be open so a food pantry runs from 10 to 3 uh every saturday and so they're putting these backpacks together and getting them ready and so they will be giving those away from 10 to 3 uh this saturday also so that's this saturday august the 7th and um, um so uh they got for grades um, first grade through sixth grade, I think is the correct grade. So I hope somebody will look at me and say, yes, that's it. I think that's it. Yep. Okay. That's it. So first grade through sixth grade, if you got somebody or know somebody that has a need like that, that we can help out and bless them, uh, with those backpacks, we would, uh, we would love to do that and help out those families. We got 75 and those backpacks have been donated by the, uh, North American mission board. And uh, as Grace Church has been a, a uh, church plant uh, for a number of years now, we're kind of believing that status, but uh, uh, the North American Mission Board still uh, uh, looks after us and contacts us. And matter of fact, one of my long range goals is to plant another couple churches. And uh, we're even working on that, praying about that. Uh, so uh, maybe some more news about that uh, in the near future or replant even. Uh, a church, and so, uh, but uh, not going to explain all that tonight. But still, I want you to want you to be praying about uh, the backpacks, giving those away, and of course the food pantry, feed my lambs food pantry that will take place uh, this uh, uh, this Saturday, August seventh, and that'll go from uh, ten to three o'clock. And so, just wanted you to be aware of that. There's lots of stuff going on. I need to get the emails out, and uh, so you can keep track of all that stuff. We just stay very active. Uh, as a church, trying to trying to reach out to our community and help uh, others, and you know, I'm blessed as a pastor that I got folks that are just willing to step up and uh, take care of that stuff, so I can focus on uh, this kind of thing. And we're and again tonight, we're just going to take a, some time and we'll explain what we're going to do here in a minute. But uh, it, again, so I just wanted to emphasize the backpack and just. Keep an eye on Facebook too. Is this page? I put a lot of stuff on there. I try to keep a lot of content on there so that you can uh, be aware and know and and prayer requests and quiet time and uh, just a just a number of things that uh, go on this page. But not everybody looks at Facebook. I'm not a big Facebook person, so I'll go and look at look at it for five ten minutes in the evening and then I'm out. And uh, so if I don't get to that uh, your uh, comment and. You know, I just don't. So if most people know to just either message me through Messenger or uh, send me a text message. And that's that's the best way. If you want me to be sure that I see something, that's the best way. Or even you can call me and uh, I'll be glad to uh, to answer that call. Uh, I'm not always able to. And I'm not. sometimes I'm slower on text messaging. Uh, if I'm working and, and driving down the road, of course, I'm not going to answer those things or uh, having a hectic day. So tonight what we're going to do, and uh, I'm going to do this even more. I, Brother Jake will be back, but I may do this at a separate time. But what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to follow up with what I talked about on Sunday. Now Sunday I mentioned uh, about the marks of a uh, leaving a mark and how that we can leave a mark. And I kind of gave you a list there of that mark. And, you know, one of them was, you know, uh, 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 set a standard, smile, uh, you know, undivided attention and things like that, that we can do in what I call the secular world, kind of just in, just in who we are. But then how can we do that as a Christian? And so I'm going to talk about that tonight, and I'm going to show you that. But before we do that, I want to take a moment, and let's just have a, have a word of prayer. And uh, I mentioned yesterday that there's some folks that are just really going through some difficult uh, times, and uh, we just need to lift them up. I'm, as a pastor, um, you know, someone asks, says, you know, boy, I'm going to pray, but how can I help? My problem with that is I can't reveal <laughs> what any of that is. I wouldn't even reveal the name uh, to you, and so I 
people tell me things in confidence and I want them always to know that they can share those things in confidence with me and I just, I'm not gonna reveal those things unless they do. If, if they do, then I, then I can uh, share those also, also but I'm, I'm not gonna do that. But let's take a moment and just pause for a second and let's pray and then we'll, we'll dive into our Bible study. Father, Lord, as we come tonight, Lord, I just lift up uh, each one that's listening tonight. And Father, I pray that you will just uh, use this time that we come together and to study your word. That Father, you will just uh, uh, teach us uh, from your word, Lord, what you, what you have for us. Father, I've mentioned that there are some folks that are just really in a difficult, difficult place uh, tonight. And Father, I pray that you the, the stress and burden upon their heart. And Lord, they're in desperate need. Father, we pray that you will just uh, be with that person. I lift them up to you, Lord. Help them uh, to get through these uh, through these trying times. And other needs, Lord, it just uh, seems like they're everywhere, uh, Father. And I pray for the physical needs that are out there. And Lord, I just uh, I lift them up to you. And well, Father, I pray your healing touch upon their lives. And Lord, we're just so grateful for all that you do for us. And, and Lord, I pray that you'll just open our hearts and our minds tonight as we study your word. In your precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, and just to kind of recap about that, one of the things that we've done Sunday is we talked about leaving a mark. And so, let's just define that again real quick uh, so we get, a, get an understanding of it. If someone or something leaves their mark or uh, leaves a mark, they have a lasting effect on another person or another thing. I told the story about how you know, that a church had given us a dishwasher. And, and uh, you know, I thought, man, it was, a, it was one of the most, <laughs> it, was, it was just kind of overwhelming of what that church had done. And so we were so grateful for that. Tina and I were just so thankful of what that church had done in County Line uh, Baptist Church. And so it was just a, just a wonderful thing. And so I just shared with that and how that made an impression with me. And so, and then I listed some things and I've already said, you know, like uh, given undivided attention, how, you know, how that we, can leave an impression on someone. We, we have undivided attentions. We smile. You know, like now I'm trying to smile. You know, sometimes that resting face looks like an old frown. You know, some of my pastor friends, they do these kind of things, and I look at them, and I think, smile, man, you know. And so, But it's nervous coming on here, and so you're, you're worried about, you know, everything working right, everything coming together, and so you just, you kind of, you kind of, uh, it, 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 it's a little nerve-wracking sometimes. I asked Tina, she's here tonight with me, I said, why don't you come sit with me? She said, I ain't doing it, so, you know, because she said, I don't want to look like a, a not on a log sitting here. <laughs> I don't blame her, she's giving me the look now, but, uh, uh, and, and it is true, it can be nerve-wracking uh, and sitting here. But yet, you know, one of the things that makes an impression on people is when you smile at them, you know? And so you meet somebody, you smile at them, you give undivided attention, you set a standard. But what can we as Christians do? And so one of the things that I mentioned, and one of the things that Paul has talked about as we go through the book of Philippians, and I've been praying about this, and really thinking about the book of Philippians and, and uh, looking at it. And, and I think one of the things I'm going to do is, is I'm going to preach through that, but I'm going, to, I'm going to chase rabbits also. And so if there's a particular subject or a particular uh, uh, thing that we want to talk about there, it's kind of like what I'm going to talk about tonight. We just may do a, I just may do a series of messages on that and uh, just that particular topic and that particular subject. And so I'm kind of looking forward to going to, through the book, book of Philippians and just letting the Lord lead uh, and guiding us. And then one of the things I want to do is I want to follow up uh, kind of each week. I see one guy looking for material of how to have a Sunday school class. I thought, man, great way to have Sunday school class is just follow up with what you uh, preach at. Because, you know, I, I, I preach about 40 minutes uh, now, and so it's hard to put uh, everything in that you want to. And so if you take a little time, maybe 30 minutes an hour during the week and just spend a little time on it. So one of the things that, that we can do as a Christian is have a thankful heart. Now I want to show you this passage of Scripture. And by the way, you're going to need your Bible. I am not going to put all the verses up on the screen for you. I want you to take your Bible. And uh, as you watch this, you can, pause your, you can pause this video, run and get your Bible, have it in your lap, I brought mine tonight. I'm not going to use it. I write them all down. The reason I put all my uh, verses in the notes is because it saves me time. <laughs> so I, can, I can talk more <laughs> instead of sitting there uh, flipping through pages. That's, that's my secret, and you know it. 
Listen to this passage of Scripture here in verse 3. And I kind of want to go back to verses 1 and 2 this coming week, or or after I do part 2 and back up a little bit, because after I got to look at it, I thought, man, I skipped over something really, really good there. And so in in Philippians chapter 1, verse 3, it says this, Every time I think of you, and I just love this, and I love it out of this translation that I'm using, every time I think of you, I give thanks to God. And so how can we, as God's people, make a mark in uh, someone's life or in the life of those around us. And so that's what I'm going to talk about tonight is how that we can live, how that we can have that thankful heart and that grateful heart and leave a mark on that. And I'm going to approach it, you know, we often thank God for what? For the things we have. But I want to approach it from a different uh, direction tonight. And the first way that I want to approach that and looking at that is what I what we call brotherhood or sisterhood. Now, you know, God tells us, uh, you know, and I mentioned this Sunday, is that we're all a family, and I kind of just glossed over this real quick. Every family has its weirdos. Well, that's true, but, uh, you know, and so in a church, every church, you know, has those folks that, you know, that, uh, you know, there's some that are quiet and some that are out front, and uh, then we got those that are in between, and so we need everybody but when you think about this, and as Paul was writing to this church, one of, the, one of the first things that you want to notice, and he mentioned this in verses 1 and 2 also, but he meant, really mentions this in verse 3 here. He says uh, that, uh, that, that he was not alone in the world, that he was not the only person uh, that God was using to share the gospel. Now, he, <clears throat> he had went and started this church and built it up and set some elders in there and uh, uh, established that church. And then he went off to the next place. (coughs) You know, there are uh, church planters nowadays that will go and they will spend, uh, they'll go start a church. Matter of fact, um, I was, I know someone that, that has done this. I can't remember how many churches he has started. It, It was in the 20s. And a 25, 27, something like that. And so there are, they, they, they got a funny name for them. They call them jackrabbits. And they will go and they will start a church, spend a couple years there, leave that church and go start another one. And uh, then a couple years there, go start another one, go start another one, go start another one. And, you know, there's a lot of pastors that do that. Now, that's not my model. That's not particularly what I want to do. I want to stay right here. So this is where the Lord has led me, and it's been a great experience. But what I do want to do is send out others to uh, help uh, start other churches. And so I would, I would, it is my desire to be what Paul has done, to send out other people into other communities. I, I, we would, I, I'd help out and sponsor a church even in this community. And uh, man, I just think it would be a wonderful thing, you know, to do that. And plus, I think it would also, and this is a great lesson that we can learn from Paul, is that he just, you know, we could go and help out other churches that are maybe uh, struggling. We're praying about that, um, that we can do that. And so he belonged, Paul belonged to this great family. And so as we think about this, this is one of the things that we do as Baptists, as Southern Baptists, is that, you know, some of us are calling us, are trying to change the name to Great Commission Baptists, and that suits me, but... Uh, you know, we there's there's uh, uh, I don't know, it's, it, I don't think there's 20 anymore. Maybe 19 uh, churches. It could be 20 uh, uh, churches in our what we call our association. We often just get together and work together. Unfortunately, as a bivocational pastor that works a lot, pastors really I'm almost pastor in a full-time church now. It's hard for me to get together for a lot of that stuff. They're doing something. Uh, next week on a Thursday night that I'm, I'm going to be here. I got this to do. And so, uh, but yet, you know, sometimes they, they do stuff. And so this is where we get this Christian term and what we call the family of God. And uh, that's kind of a, a, a churchy term, but I want you to, I want you to understand that churchy term because it's a good one, because we are, you know, and, and some of you, some of you I've met only a couple times. Some of you, you know, I've known for several years, but and you're, there's no blood in us. I mean, we don't share any kind of ancestry whatsoever, but yet we're still a family. We're still together. You know, some some would use a modern term today. We could we could call it 
you know, that's my tribe. And uh, so that's kind of a term that they could, they could use. And so this Philippian church was also, so they were sharing the good news. Paul was sharing the good news. And that's what they had in common. Now, Paul was in prison and he was a great distance from this church, yet he had this awesome memory of them. Look what this verse says. I just love this verse. Every time I think of you. And so what did he do? What did Paul do? He remembered their love and their support. I mean, we can go back and we can think about people in our Christian life. You know, I mentioned County Line. I can mention other people that in my own Christian life, you know, there's just been there, you know, even now. I got a text message from a pastor friend today that just, you know, just brightened my day. It lifted me up. And, you know, we as pastors often do that with each other. We'll just, you know, send out a text message. And you guys are to be doing that too. You are to be doing that. You know, uh, uh, a, a person in uh, the church here, I get text messages at least two or three times a week asking me what what can they do for me. And man, it, you know, just, it thrills my heart. You know, somebody asked me just, uh, was it this morning? Yesterday morning, I can't keep track of time, but how can you pray for you? And man, I just, you know, that was just something that, and so why do we do that? Because we're a family, because we, we remember each other. We love each other. We support each other. We lift each other up. Now, I love the way he says this. He listened to the way he says this. Every time I think of you, when he thought of that Philippian church, there he was sitting in that prison, chained to that guard. Can you imagine just being chained to someone 24-7? I mean, <laughs> you know, prison back then was not like it is today. You know, even though prison may be rough today, it was, pretty, it was really rough then. And so his heart, you can see just how his heart would swell with gratitude uh, toward this church. And so what does he do? He gives thanks for them to the Lord. So that certainly leads us to a natural question, doesn't it? Who do we give thanks for? Who are you thankful for? I mean, what a lesson that is, amen? What a lesson to think about that. We should be doing what? We should be thanking God for each other, shouldn't we? You know, I, I, I mean, I, let's just be honest about it. We're not always going to get along. <laughs> I mean, not everybody, you know. I mean, there's going to be, in every family, there's what? There's squabbles. And it happens in every family. But yet, what do we do? We set aside our differences. We set aside our preferences. And we surrender to the Lord. Here's the great thing about, you know, a church is that we got, uh, we, we have the Lord Jesus as the head of us. He's the one that we surrender to. He's the one that we're under. And that's who we uh, 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 give the glory to. And so even though we can't always, you know, God warned us over and over and over and over and over again that we're to do what? That we're to love one another. He told us to do that. And why did he warn us about it so many times? Because he has made each of us what? Unique. Each of us are different. And that's what's so great about it. But it's also, I mean, just think, just think if everybody was like me. Whew, boy, we'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? But, you know, we're all different. And yet, we all have different ideals about stuff. We all have different uh, uh, likes and dislikes. And so sometimes we think, you know, music is always a, is always a hot button issue. Uh, it's, especially in some churches, you know. Um, you know, uh, uh, and, and what kind of music to play? Do we play the modern praise music or do we sing hymns? Uh, you know, I want to do both. I mean, I think both have a place uh, in the church. I, I seen a, uh, uh, a discussion uh, just today. What about Sunday night service? You know, some churches think, my goodness, you know, you're, you are disgracing the Lord if you don't have Sunday night service. Uh, you know, this is one thing that Grace Church will probably never do. Why? Because this is this is my time. Sunday night's my time to get some rest. <laughs> so I pretty much what what Tina and I call veg out. Uh, it's not real. We don't really eat vegetables. <laughs> it's usually something good. But uh, <laughs> we just we just relax and just you know just let everything. Uh, you know, I don't really just think about stuff. I just sit and relax and 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 just just have some some restful time. And you've heard me give Monday morning discussions. I have Monday mornings, 
I go and man, I just run all day. Uh, but Sunday nights, man, it's my time. Sunday afternoon is my time just to just to ch ch just to chill out and relax. And so we should be back to I kind of chased a rabbit there. We should be thanking God for each other. You know, one danger sign <clears throat> of burnout, and you know, not all, pastors are not the only one that burns out. Church members burn out too. And here's one of the here's one of the danger signs that you need to be aware of if you think you're burning out. And it has to do your, with your relationship to other people. It's becoming cynical. Now, what does cynical mean? Cynical means believing that people are motivated by self-interest. Let's let that sink in for a moment, okay? Being cynical is thinking people are being motivated by their own self-interest. And when you approach somebody, and so the rest of that definition goes like this, distrustful of human sincerity or integrity. What do you what does that mean? It means you don't trust anybody. Everybody's lying to you. Boy, you know, pastors can fall into that. I mean, and then church members can fall into that that, you know, they, they see their pastor as just, man, he's just trying to use me. And they can see other members as just saying that just trying to use me. We need to change our attitude about that. And we need to thank God. Look what Paul did. He says, every time I think of you Every time I think of you, I, how's he say it? I give thanks to my God. And so get rid of that cynicism it's of the devil, by the way. You know, if, if people do have a self-interest, that they're motivated by that, the Lord will clean all that out. And, uh, you know, if you're distrustful of somebody's sincerity or their integrity, you know, let the Lord take care of that, amen? Remember, amen? Remember this, that we're all working for the gospel. Just let that sink in, that we're all working for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have the love and care and support of each other. I love this. Someone said it this way. We have the love and care and support of each other week by week, day by day. We can call upon each other for help any hour of any day. That's what a family of God does. And that's why that, that term is so important. This is why we can be so thankful for each other. It's because we got that support system out there that can help us, that can lift us up. You know, and we're going through some struggle, some heartache, some problem. You know, this is why people reach out to me because, you know, some of this stuff they don't want anybody knowing about. And I understand that. But sometimes people will say, and, you know, we do this on Sunday morning. It takes time. And, uh, but it's time well spent when people are standing there and say, you know, I've got this issue and I need prayer and I need help. And um, man, you know, we want to pray for you. We want to lift you up. We want to help you. We want to support you. We want to come around you. You know, this is what we need, need to do to new Christians. When somebody becomes a new Christian, man, this is a whole new world. We got our own language. You know that? Did you realize that? And so as you got somebody new, and I can think of a couple people that are kind of new. Somebody asked me Sunday said, <clears throat> that they wanted to understand prayer better and how, what could they read and what could they do and how can they, you know, they're a brand new Christian and they need to know that. They need to understand that. And so what does we need to do? We need to come around. So the next day I put a little sheet together, a little thing together and send it to them. And, and uh, uh, Lord willing, they're digging in and seeing what the Bible says about how to be thankful for for each other. So let me ask you tonight, just how often, how often do you thank God for each other? I want you, we need to do that. We need to make that a daily practice. We need to be praying for each other and lifting one another up and thanking each other uh, for, uh, for each other's presence, you know. And again, you know, we may have a different opinion about something, but I don't know you another way to say it, but get over it. <laughs> you know, you just gotta, you just gotta let it go. You gotta let it rub off your back. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I want you to take your Bible, and uh, as you go, so this will be posted on Facebook. Lord willing, I'll be able to get this up on, uh, up on the website. And again, I'm gonna do more of these, but I'm gonna give you several verses here that we can look, that you can look at, and you can go back and. And you can uh, investigate yourself. So if you don't have your Bible, uh, get, get a pen and paper. Pause this just for a moment. And if you're watching live, just a, just a couple of you. But if you're watching live, uh, you can write these down real quick. But if you're not watching live, you're catching this later. 
just take these and let's write these down and let's go back and look at these because these are all about being thankful. And uh, I have a wonderful uh, program that helps me do this. To, these are the key passages about having a thankful heart and how to have that what God says about it. So let's run down. Psalm 95. And again, I'm not putting these on the screen. I want you to look these up in your Bible and write, I believe, writing in your Bible. Uh, right beside this verse in your Bible, thankful or thankful heart uh, is, a, is a great way to do that. Circle the verse, underline it, whatever it takes, and right beside it, a thankful heart. <clears throat> and I think you will just be, you'll be really blessed because you'll go back through that and you'll see that on the, on, in your margin. And you'll say, oh, okay, thankful heart. Let me read that again. And so here we go. All right, Psalm 95. This is Psalm 95, verses 1 and 2. Come, and I love this, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Amen? Let us sing for joy for the Lord. Let us shout out loud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with what? With thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. So we want to come before the Lord. We first of all want to thank God for who He is, right? And we want to shout and we want to sing for who God is and come to Him with thanksgiving. And then, so that's Psalm 95, verses 1 and 2. And I'm going to repeat each, each one of these uh, several times, and I'll put a note on the website underneath uh, these passages. Matter of fact, I'll post these. I'll post this up on the website. And uh, underneath this, matter, this was today's quiet time Bible reading, by the way. Also, all of these verses. And so, Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Psalm 100... Verses 4 and 5. Listen to this one. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, he says. And his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. So who are we, who are we giving thanks for? We're giving thanks to the Lord. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His thankfulness, or his thankfulness, his faithfulness continues through all generations. So we can see how God uh, is faithful even through all the generations. Look at a few, so that's Psalm, almost moved on too fast, Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. And again, these were in today's, this is August the 5th, Thursday, August the 5th, quiet time Bible reading. This is all, those verses are also on the website. I post the quiet time uh, 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 devotion. Bible reading and prayer every day on the website also. So you can go there and look at this. And I'm imploring you to do that and go and just begin to dig down deep into what these mean. And again, use your Bible. Use your translation that you're using and uh, let the Lord speak to you. All right? So Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 and through 20. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. I always love this verse because we want to focus on the drunk wine part, but really what God is focusing on is being filled with the Spirit. He's saying that's what's important. Don't get drunk on wine. Don't fill up with wine. Fill up with the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, speaking to one another with psalms, speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. This is why I talk about this sometimes. When we come in on Sunday morning to worship the Lord and we sing songs, don't sit there like a nod on a log. Just don't sit there and just, you know, kind of halfway mouth the words, put your hands in your pocket. You want to, that's cheap grace. We want to come, when we sing, it's like a hymn of sacrifice. It's like a praise of sacrifice. I'm not saying that the way I want to, but uh, you get what I mean. It's like, it's like we're offering this sweet Savior to the Lord. We're saying, Lord, we're singing to the Lord. We ain't singing to each other. Thank the Lord. Amen. Because I can't sing. But I'm singing to the Lord. Now, sometimes you'll see me up there piddling with stuff. And sometimes I'll think about something in my message and I'll look at that. But my heart is still singing. I want you to know that. I just, you know, want to make, uh, I want to set a standard for that experience during worship. 
is what I'm trying to do. So he's, verse 20, always giving thanks, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 through 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. Now let's look at 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. You go, where in the world is Thessalonians at in the Bible? Let me give you a big hint on how to do that. So right here is my Bible. If I take my Bible and I open it up, you can see me here on the on the screen, I think. I'm looking at my screen here. If I open that up and right in the front, what you're going to have, uh, I don't know if you can see that, probably not, maybe, you got a table of contents. So go to the table of contents and look down. You'll see that this is in the New Testament. And in this Bible, the book of 1 Thessalonians is on page 2106. So I turn to page 2106, and I can find it. You know, somebody like me that has been uh, studying the Bible all their lives can, can, uh, can find that, you know, pretty easy. Although, I've been using an iPad for a lot of years, and I'm rusty. <laughs> and if you use your phone, hey, that's great. Man, I, I don't knock that at all. You know, and so I want you to do that. However, you know, if you have a Bible that is uh, paper and ink like this right here, one of the things that you can do with that is you can write in the margin and you can have that uh, there that uh, help you. And that's always better. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Listen to this. Man, I love this one. Rejoice always. Amen. I'm going to say that loud. Pray continually. Verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances. Oh, boy. In all circumstances, you know, so, you know, even when we're struggling and going through headache and heartache, we can still give thanks for it is, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's God's will for you to give thanks to the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Revelation chapter 11, verse 16 through 17. Revelation chapter 11, verse 16 through 17. Now, I want you to understand this scene is taking place in heaven. So when I read this, I want you to think about this is going on in heaven at this very moment. And the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and was because you have taken your great power and have began, begun to reign. Man, isn't that a powerful verse? Just think seeing that. When we, you know, uh, leave this world, nobody's in a hurry to do that, but when we do leave this world and we're in heaven, imagine the scene of these 24 elders sitting around and sitting on their thrones before God, falling on their faces, Worshiping God. This is what they do continually, day in and day out. What a scene that will be. I don't think that will be something that will ever, ever, ever grow old. So, Revelation chapter 11, verse 16 through 17. <clears throat> and then listen to Philemon. Philemon, ever how you want to say that. I've heard it said two different ways. Now, Philemon only has one chapter in it. So we're looking at verses 4 through 7. Philemon chapter 1. Verses 4 through 7. Again, it only has uh, one chapter. And you'll see that it looks like it's chapter 4 through 7, but it's not. It only has one chapter, and we're looking at verses 4 through 7. I think I find this one interesting because this is... He wrote this to a person, Philemon. Paul did. But he also wrote to the church. And it almost says the exact same thing. Verse 4, he says... I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers. He thanks God for Philemon in his prayers because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray, man, I love this one. Listen to this. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding for every good thing we share. 
for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Your love has given me great joy. Man, that's what I want. Isn't it you? I want to know that when someone thinks of me, not everyone does, unfortunately, but I know I want when someone thinks of me to just then, then it's an encouragement, then it's, that it brings joy to their lives. And because why? Because I want to have that thankful heart for them. And I want to show that I love them and care for them. And uh, uh, not everyone will. It's the facts of life. And, uh, you know, <laughs> we can't please everybody, right? But what we can do, we can please most people. And because why? Because we want to have that heart for the Lord. And uh, Paul says, when I think of you, Philemon, I brings great joy and encouragement to me. So there he was, sitting in prison, writing to, to these people and saying, boy, when I think about you, it brings great joy in my life. Why? Because I'm thankful for what God has done. So let's take this. Let's, let's think of this. this. Matter of fact, I write here in my notes before I go too far, far. This proves our love for Jesus is how we love one another. If we cannot, if we cannot, you know, God tells us, if you go to the altar and you have something against a brother or sister, you need to go make that right before you even offer up your prayer of sacrifice. Because God is saying, how can you, how can you come to me when you have this problem with someone else? And it's the mark of a mature, mature Christian, a, a mature Christian, is that we just have this thank, thankful heart for each other. We set aside our preferences. We set aside our our desires to do, uh, you know, what we want. We want to do what God wants. I, I, I like this. A complaining Christian is an oxymoron. We shouldn't be doing that. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us. It's in Philippians here. I wish I knew exactly where that verse was. God says, don't complain. <sighs> You know, I've said this as a as a rule carrier. You know, uh, it's in my DNA <laughs> today. You know, I started out first thing off the bat, rawr, 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 rawr. and I go, wait a minute, stop, quit, don't do it. You know, and I have to remind myself. You know, and sometimes uh, things don't always go the way we want them to, and we tend to do what we tend to complain about it, don't we? You know, we go to a restaurant, and we, you know, Tina and I went out to eat this evening, and and uh, you know, the place I, I I don't like their salsa, and guess what I did? Complained about it. <laughs> so I ordered something else, and I just think, oh my gosh, you know, and it, it's it's so natural for us to do that sometimes. And God says we should have thankful hearts. You know, if I don't like the salsa, keep my mouth shut about it. Amen. <laughs> just you know, if there's something I don't like. Keep my mouth shut about it. But, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's everything we do. It should permeate everything we do. Is have this grateful, thankful heart. It shows that you have matured in your Christian walk. You know, as you're a new Christian, you're starting out, there are going to be times where you're just going to go, oh, my goodness, what am I doing? This is this awful. And, uh, you know, um, um, let me just, I'm just going to be blunt about this. If you've, if you've hung on this long, let me just be blunt about this. If you've been in church all your life and you do nothing but complain, I, you know, you need to check your heart and you need to just surrender your heart to the Lord because that heart has turned dark. I love that passage this morning, that quiet time I had this morning about that, is that we can let our heart turn dark sometimes uh, because we just do what? We just, we just, we lose sight. We become that cynical person. Don't do it. Just turn that heart. Get read these passages, and you can. I mean, how can you read these passages and not put, and then not put a smile on your face? How can you just study those and say, "Wow, the Lord does love me, doesn't he?" And he just and he he shines down on me, and I'm so thankful for all that he does for me. That'll put a smile on your face. That'll stop the complaining. Amen. So there we are. There and a little sermon there on the end. Amen. The mark of a thankful heart. That's the kind of mark we want. Hey, God bless you tonight.
uh, I didn't go near an hour, but uh, just about 30 minutes, maybe just a little over. Uh, 40 minutes, usually what I go anyway on a sermon. So uh, God bless you. Have a great evening. And uh, have a great, uh, you'll, if you're on the website watching this, thank you. If, see it on YouTube. That's how I do it. I load it up to YouTube and then put it on the website. All right. God bless you. Have a great evening. And uh, I'm going to give a picture of all these backpacks before they uh, are given away uh, Saturday. Man, there's a big stack of them. God bless you, everybody. See you now. Bye.